Over the last decade or so on this channel I've featured many different music formats, some old, some new, some very familiar, and others so obscure that a Google search didn't even bring up a match. The variety of ways that music has been physically distributed over the years is something that I find fascinating, and I enjoy unearthing and showing these forgotten or obscure formats on this channel. But in this video I'll be showing you something a little bit different, music on game cartridges. Now, of course, you could quite rightfully claim that these aren't game cartridges because these aren't games, but I couldn't think of another better title for this video. If I just put music on cartridges, it could have been 8-track or something. But anyway, let's move on. We've got Dub CRT for the Commodore 64. I'm going to be playing that on my SX64 and Remute for the Sega Mega Drive. I think Remute came out earlier this year, but I've probably had that Dub CRT cartridge for a year or so now. So we'll start off with that one. Dub CRT is described as a music album, interactive light synthesizer, and remix gadget. It works on PAL Commodore 64s only, and the cartridge contains eight songs, with each one of those accompanied by a visualizer, which is generated using Commodore's Petsky graphics. The packaging for the cartridge is quite interesting. You can tell a lot of care and attention has gone into making the presentation of it into an interesting experience. The inclusion of a number of old advertisements for computer accessories reminds me of the hours I spent reading through the back pages of computer magazines back in the 80s, so it definitely achieves in delivering the nostalgia hit that they were presumably aiming for. The back of the box explains a little bit more about what to expect. Apparently it delivers the eight songs with reactive and interactive visuals in a 1960s modernist style, and hidden in its mysterious interface are functions to control the visuals and transform the music beyond recognition. So it sounds to be more of an interactive experience than I first expected. The cartridge itself rather than being made out of moulded plastic has been screwed together from flat acrylic panels. It's got four white LEDs on the front and a reset button on the top corner. There's also a further document that goes on to explain that the menu system takes the form of a puzzle of sorts, where features are unlocked as you navigate the various songs. So my initial thoughts about this being an album of SID music with accompanying visualizers is starting to sound like it was a little bit too conventional. Now the cartridge itself, being of an unusual shape, is a tighter fit than most in my computer, but after a bit of wiggling and powering the computer on, I'm greeted by the title screen. Now there's no on-screen menu, but pressing numbers 1 through to 8 will jump between the individual songs. And I quickly discovered that these are more experimental and arty than I anticipated. If, like me, you were hoping for some kind of Rob Hubbard type tunes accompanied by dancing visuals, well, it's not exactly that. It's quite a bit more abstract. The deliberately glitchy organic sounds are accompanied by graphics that mostly seem to be random or procedurally generated. In general though, they don't seem to have too much relationship with the music, although some are definitely more reactive than others. You could alter the tunes and the visuals by pressing various buttons on the keyboard. It's not explained what buttons do what, it's all about experimentation, so pressing each button adjusts the length of bars that are displayed at the bottom left of the screen. Some seem to alter the colours or perhaps the speed at which they're cycled, and others adjust the levels of the individual music channels. For the next couple of minutes though, I'm going to play you a variety of tracks so you can get more of a feeling as to what this is all about. But if you're susceptible to flashing images, you might want to give the rest of this video a miss.
Now, the final tune is really a game of sorts. Pressing number eight leads to it, and you control the letter G with your joystick, and you try and collect dollar signs, which then apparently add extra elements to the music. It's your job to jump, climb, and avoid deadly objects or surfaces. I found it very difficult to control and quite frustrating. It's not really a game in a conventional sense, and I just really didn't enjoy playing it. Whenever you return to the main menu, you'll find that this screen has acquired new elements, which I believe change the way the tracks or the game plays, but it's all just really so out there, I couldn't tell exactly what was going on. Whenever you do turn the machine off though, all the progress you've made is lost. So in a nutshell, that's Dub CRT. It's quite different to what I expected, and yes, that's entirely on me, I understand that. It's far more avant-garde and abstract than I imagined it would be, and gotta say it's just not really my thing. I mean you can't like everything can you? We've all got different tastes. I'm sure some people will love this kind of stuff though and if that's you then great. It's just not my cup of tea. If you do want to get hold of one I'm not sure if they're still available. I bought mine a year or so ago but if you are interested you can visit the website shown on the screen and ask them. But now for something completely different. This is Techno Optimistic by the artist Remute, and this one by comparison is really quite straightforward. It's just an album on a Mega Drive or Genesis cartridge. The music is generated through the Yamaha sound chip, and according to the instructions, sounds its best on an original Model 1 machine, but we'll have to make do with my Multi Mega. The presentation compared to the other cartridge is far more conventional. You're presented with a list of tracks and you can play through the whole list from top to bottom or jump to an individual track using the joypad. I'll play you a few short clips from a number of these tracks so you can get an idea as to the type of music that it contains. thing on the cartridge though is a short video that accompanies the track Red Eyes. We interrupt this broadcast with a message from the future. After I first uploaded this video, the audio for the next segment hit an auto content match. Now, I thought showing this short clip would be helpful publicity for the cartridge, but it seems like the content bots have other ideas. So sorry, but I've just had to substitute the audio for the track Red Eyes with something that better reflects the situation in which we find ourselves. If you want to buy this cartridge or just to hear these tracks in full, then search for Techno Optimistic, or one word, and you'll find the Remute Bandcamp page. For me though, I feel that a bit more use could have been made of the fact that this is being played on a Mega Drive. Yes, of course it's playing the music from the sound chip, but it really is just functioning like a CD player. There's not much in the way of interaction. A simple visualizer to accompany the tracks would have been a welcome addition, for example. Although I enjoyed the short video, I would have loved to have seen one of these for each track. Of course, I appreciate why that's impractical, though. So a bit of a mixed bag with cartridge music there. Although this hasn't put me off backing a Commodore 64 SID album and cartridge set that's on Kickstarter, and that one's due out in 2020. 
But now to finish off with a bit of a request. Making this video has reminded me that there's something I'm looking for which doesn't seem to exist, and I'm wondering if anyone watching this could help make it a reality. I'm looking for a modern day equivalent of the Atari Video Music, a plug and play device that takes an audio input and outputs a visualizer to a video display. You might recall the video component device I featured a while ago. That's what got me thinking about this. You see, I've got a couple of boom boxes with built-in black and white CRTs, and a video visualizer seems to be the perfect use to put one of these two. Most of the video boom boxes only have RF inputs, though, because they were just designed to pick up analog television, which, of course, is no use nowadays. And, of course, when the television is on on these devices, the cassette and the radio are off. So perhaps this imaginary device I'm thinking of would have to be a Bluetooth receiver as well. But just imagine something the size of a pack of cards you could integrate into an old boombox to give that CRT something to do again. It would have to be plug and play, you know, messing around with configurations or typing things on a keyboard, just something that works as soon as it's powered up. Just a pie in the sky idea, but if anyone wants to make one, then I'd be more than happy to be your first customer and to demonstrate it on this channel. But anyway, that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.